Hey, what's going on, guys? Dope Hunter Nine Thirty here, and I am making this video. Um, uh, it's a tutorial video based off of um, someone that goes by the name of Flatfishy on my forums, and this tutorial is how to build a probe from scratch. And I'll be following this tutorial step by step. Um, I've never done this before. Don't even know whether you know how accurate it is or how well it works, but I guess time will tell. Um, so let's get started. Um, okay, so it says things you need. Oh, and by the way, I'm just going to be following along reading through the forums because, like I said, I've never done this before. So I'm just going to go step by step through it all and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, so it says what will you need? Um, you will need an Xbox DVD drive power cable. Got here. Uh, soldering iron. Got here. Um, a sewing pin. Just went to Target and picked these up. Got plenty of those. Uh, some solder, plenty of that. Scissors and c or cutting pliers, got that. And a switch. Um, so when I went to uh, Radio Shack, I wasn't sure what kind of switch to get because they had two types. They have the type where you click, it stays down, click, it goes off, and then they have the type that you hold down and release. And so I wasn't sure which one to get at the time. I just went with both. Um, but after doing a little bit of research, when you do use the probe, you only need to power off for a brief second, so to me this seemed like a better option than having to click. You can just you know hold it down and then release. So this seemed like the better one to get. Um, <clears throat> I can get the model number for you. I'll put it in the in the link of the description for you guys in case you want to buy it. And then this tutorial didn't say to have this, but in the end of the video I decided to add it because at the time I couldn't find electric tape, which I did find now. But I just bought some uh, you know heat shrink tubing. Um, just to make everything as clean as possible. Uh, so yeah, and it says also you'll need some wire, and I figured for wire, I'll just go ahead and use this since you know what the hell. Um, okay, so it says take your Xbox DVD power cable and face one of the connectors away from you. Make sure ridges on top of the connectors are facing up. So let's see, ridges are gonna be on this side. So. So it's going to be looking like that if you're looking at it. You want the ridges, which are on top right here, facing away from you. So it says, make sure ridges on top, okay. Um, then on the top row from the left, if you're looking at it like in the picture, count three boxes. So one, two, three. Then with that wire, cut back the insulation for the wire. Don't cut it in half. We just want to expose the metal wire underneath the rubber. Okay, so let me show you guys. Okay, so when it's facing like this, it's the one, two, three, third wire. I don't know how well you can see this because I don't see the webcam on my screen, but it's going to be this one. If it looks like shit after, um, I'll put a picture up um, during the video so you can actually look at it. And there's, you know, you can you can remove the wire in various ways. You can either use a lighter and burn the rubber and then just pull it right off or use a wire stripper of some sort. But for me, I'll probably just use my, my soldering iron and just get it really hot around it. I can actually just keep holding it. It shouldn't be too difficult. That looks about good. Okay, so as you can see, all I did was expose the wire underneath a little bit. Uh, okay, so we just want to expose. Then strip insulation from a small piece of Ethernet wire that's and solder it onto the Xbox DVD power cable on the part we just stripped above. Wrap with some electrical tape. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some of these wires. By the way, I did read somewhere else a similar tutorial and it seems that everything I'm doing right here, you don't need to actually solder anything if you don't have a soldering iron or you just don't know how to solder. But it's definitely recommended to solder it just because of the fact that, you know, the points will be much more, the connections will be better, and you won't have to worry about the, the wires un unwrapping. So I recommend soldering. But so give me a minute here. I'm going to do two wires so it'll be a little bit longer, the probe. I'd actually end up doing three. I'd rather have more length on it. So all I'm doing right now is 
getting the end of the wire. And like I said, you don't need to use a soldering iron for this. You can you can either like bite the tips of the wire off or um, <clears throat> use wire strippers. It doesn't matter. Bottom line, just get the wire showing. I'll cut a little bit more back on this side. It'll be interesting to see how all this works. I'm actually pretty excited because I ordered a, a CK3i and I also have a company sending me a USB Pro, but I did not get a probe, so I figured what the hell, because I'm going to be making a lot of flashing tutorial videos for uh, for you guys as well as this company has asked me to show how to get DVD keys um, from different drives so I needed to make a probe so I can do all the fat light on drives okay so now if you don't have a soldering iron all you're gonna do <clears throat> is get the ends and bind them together just cross them like that and spin them as many times as you can so they're holding they're tight in place And then if you're not soldering it, all you need to do is kind of bend the wire to the side and then uh, put electric tape around it or some kind of insulation. For me, I'm just going to leave it like this right now and then afterwards I'm going to slide the shrink tubing over it and then lock it all in place so it won't be going anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and add this one on too so I have more length. I don't like not having enough length when I do things. Okay. Okay, and then for me, since I'm using solder and soldering iron, I'm going to go ahead and solder the points. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. Come on. Alright. Looks nice and good. All you really have to do if you don't know how to solder and you have a soldering iron and you want to do this um, is really hold the solder against the wire and then put the wire, I mean, put the soldering iron on the other side and it will actually melt the solder right and it'll flow right onto the wire. So it's really easy. Okay. So that looks good. The points seem like they're pretty intact. Then let's go ahead and grab one end and do as the tutorial said. and. Um, like I said, if you're not soldering, you're just gonna take this and wrap it around the point. So let me do that. And then put some electric tape over it. But as I said before, I am going to do all the cleaning up after I'm done with this. Soldered on <clears throat> nicely. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. You should be somewhere like this. This is what you should be dealing with right now. Um, solder on a nice box. Wrap with some electrical tape. Should look like this. Okay, right on. Then with the wire you just added on the other end, strip it and wrap it around the sewing pin. Then solder it on. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and open up these pins. This thing's got like safety clips on. No, it's not use that. Let's see scissors. God, this thing is a pain in the ass to open. Oh, 
it. <laughs> Don't do that. Be careful with these sonic pins because they are sharp. Okay, so let me get one of the longer ones because it comes in different sizes. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to get your sewing pin and then it says to wrap the other end of the long wire to the end of it, to the end of the sewing pin. And since I'm soldering, I, I'm going to go ahead and solder it to the pin so it gets a good connection. Let's see, how does that look? Pretty good, let's add a little bit more. <clears throat> That's about right. Okay, so once you have your sewing needle on, then I recommend to uh, put some electric tape around it. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Now it's time to put the switch into the line. Take your connector and hold it how you held it before. So, like this. <clears throat> the wire that you splice should be on top. Now directly below there is another wire. Take that wire and cut it in half. Okay, so before we, we counted, um, let me show you again. When, when it's facing you, the ones without any wires coming out of it should be on the left side. So the third one over should be this one that you splice and put this onto. And then so the one below it is the one you're going to want to grab. And according to the tutorial, let me make sure I grab the right one. Yeah. So according to the tutorial, you're going to go ahead and split this in half. Let me make sure I do it in the middle. About right. Uh, it says now you want to strip each wire you just cut in half. Okay, so then get your wire stripper whatever method you're using to strip the wire back and strip both tips of the wire you just you just cut in half And then solder that onto the switch. Okay, so then you need to go ahead and get the switch that you have, and there's two ends on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'll actually put the wire through the holes if I can do that. So, yeah, that went through nicely. Might have to make this a little bit longer. Maybe not. Let's see. That should work. Make sure you don't have <clears throat> the two ends touching at all the wire, because that will totally defeat the purpose. The switch is supposed to allow power to run through only when you want it to. And if they are touching, then it's going to be running through all the time, so that would be pointless. Um, <clears throat> if you're not using solder for this, then make sure you you twist it really, really tight so it gets a good connection. You don't want to like mine because mine's wobbly, which doesn't matter since I'm soldering, like I said. But um, it's a lot more important if you're not soldering that your connections are better. Otherwise, it won't function properly. Come on, baby. Okay, so almost there. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply some solder to both ends. <clears throat> I wish I had a better work area. I only have like one lamp in my room. Okay, so that one, 
Let's see, that one's definitely good. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do the other one. That one looks good. So this is what you want to have, something like that. I don't know how well you can see it on that camera, but something like that. <clears throat> now it should look like this. Yep. My button. All right, and I guess that's it. So <clears throat> I'm going to run out to my car real quick and grab a lighter so I can put the heat shrink tubing on it. But essentially, we're done. Um, sadly, I don't have my CK3i yet, so I actually cannot test this out. But the second I do get it in the mail, I will definitely make a uh, you know testing video and upload it for you guys so let me pause the video run out to my car and i'll be right back